Saberwolf from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Recorded on May 20th, 2019. Contents. Section 1. Gameplay. Section 2. Development. Section 3. Reception. Section 4. Legacy. Saberwolf is an action-adventure game released by British video game developer Ultimate Play the Game for the ZX Spectrum home computer in 1984. The player navigates the pith-helmeted Saberman through a 2D jungle maze while collecting amulet pieces to bypass the Guardian at its exit. The player does not receive explicit guidance on how to play and is left to decipher the game's objectives through trial and error. Saberman moves between the maze's 256 connected screens by touching the border where one screen ends and another begins. Each screen is filled with colorful flora, enemies that spawn at random, and occasional collectibles. Ultimate released the game for the ZX Spectrum at an above average price to combat piracy. Its premium product packaging became a company standard. The developers had finished Saberwolf's sequels in advance of its release, but in keeping with their penchant for secrecy, chose to withhold them for marketing purposes. The sequels were swiftly released later that year. Ultimate hired outside developers to port Saberwolf to other computing platforms, the BBC Micro, Commodore 64, and Amstrad CPC. The game was later featured in compilations, including the 2015 retrospective of games by Ultimate and its successor Rare. Several gaming publications recommended the game. The Crash magazine readers named it the best maze game of 1984. Saber Wolf was a bestseller and a financial success, though its labyrinthine gameplay was similar to that of Ultimate's previous release, reviewers preferred Saber Wolf. They further noted its difficult gameplay and lauded its graphics. Game journalists remember Saberwolf among the Spectrum's best releases, and for starting the Saberman series. Section 1. Gameplay In Saberwolf, the player guides the pith-helmeted adventurer Saberman through a two-dimensional maze. The player must reconstruct an amulet from its four pieces scattered throughout the maze to bypass the Guardian at its exit a cave that leads to the game's sequel, Underworld. The maze is presented in flip screens such that the player views one static tile of the maze's grid at a time. For example, when Saberman reaches the left edge of one screen, he continues the maze at the right edge of the next screen. The game opens to music composed by Johann Sebastian Bach. Its tiled maze contains 256 screens and is drawn in a 16 by 16 grid. The maze's paths are bordered by tropical flora, populated with attacking enemies and, on its outskirts, surrounded by mountains. Apart from the jungle, the game's maze also includes several lakes. The player swings Saberman's saber with the push of the joystick's fire button to defeat enemies that spawn in random screen locations. When the player idles too long in the same screen, an indestructible bushfire appears to pursue Saberman. Enemies including spiders, scorpions, snakes, bats, indigenous people, sleeping hippos, and a fast wolf, the titular Saberwolf, some enemies are killed, others flee when hit, while the wolf, cave guardian, and bushfire are unaffected by the saber. The player does not receive any explicit guidance on how to play and is left to decipher the game's objectives through trial and error. Saberwolf's graphics fill the screen with a minimal user interface, consisting of the current game score, number of lives left, and a high score meter on the top row. Saberman can eat orchid power-ups, which bloom for only a few seconds, to turn the color of the orchid and receive a temporary character effect. Some effects empower, like invulnerability or increased speed, while others impair, like reversing the player's controls. Saberman can also collect treasure and extra lives scattered throughout the maze. The Spectrum and Commodore 64 releases included a two-player mode in which players take turns controlling their own Saberman. There is a screenshot in this section with the caption, Saberman, top right, 
faces the wolf in his path top left in one of the 256 screens that compose Saber Wolf's maze. An enemy spider shows in the lower path. Section 2 Development The developer of Saber Wolf Ultimate Play the Game had a reputation for secrecy. The company rarely gave interviews or revealed details about their internal practices or upcoming games. Little is known about their development process, apart from that they used Sage 4 computers, preferred to develop for the ZX Spectrum Z80's microprocessor, and often outsourced development for other platforms, such as those that ran on the 6502 microprocessors. After releasing Attic Attack at the end of 1983, Ultimate went silent until it ran teaser advertisements for Saberwolf in April 1984. The company rarely depicted actual gameplay in their advertisements. They had already prepared Night Lore, the third game in the Saberman series, in advance of the character's introduction in Saberwolf. Ultimate withheld Night Lore for about a year because they felt Saberwolf would not have sold as well once players saw the former's graphical advancements. Nightlore subsequently became known as a seminal work in British gaming history and an iconic game of the 1980s for its popularization of the isometric platformer format. Ultimate released Saberwolf for the ZX Spectrum in 1984, and other Saberman titles both released later that year. Saberwolf was Ultimate's first game to use what would become the company's standard price and mysterious unadorned packaging, retailing at £9.95. Ultimate nearly doubled its usual price in what they saw as a bold step to combat piracy. They expected legal owners to be more protective over letting friends copy their more expensive games. Ultimate had seen competitor prices slowly increasing and felt that the price was fair for their time invested. The game retailed in a large, high-quality cardboard box with a glossy instruction manual, both upgrades over typical game packaging. It became ultimate standard packaging for new games. The company's game packaging was nondescript and showed no screenshot of the in-game world. Ultimate's games also did not display internal credits. The company hired outside developers to complete Saberwolf ports for other computers. Paul Proctor wrote the BBC Microconversion, and in 1985, Greg Duddle wrote the Commodore 64 conversion, which was licensed under Firebird. Saberwolf later appeared in the 1985 compilation They Sold a Million, a collection of Spectrum games that had together sold a million units. When the compilation was released for the Amstrad CPC, Saberwolf was converted for the platform and eventually released in a standalone edition. Saberwolf also appeared alongside Underworld, its sequel, in a Commodore 64 pack, and in August 2015, Xbox One compilation of the 30 Ultimate and Rare titles, Rare Replay. There is a photo of the ZX Spectrum in this section. Section 3. Reception Reviewers appreciated the game's graphics and found its gameplay similar to Ultimate's previous game, Attic Attack particularly in its opening sequence and maze format, but preferred Saberwolf. Critics also noted the game's difficulty and above-average pricing. Saberwolf was a selected recommendation in Crash, Personal Computer Games, and Popular Computing Weekly. The game was named Best Maze Game in 1984 Crash Readers Awards. Ultimate's new pricing strategy was a success, and Saberwolf topped the sales chart in the video game format. While Retro Gamer reported that Saberwolf broke the company's sale records, Computer and Video Games said that the release underperformed prior games, with only 30,000 copies sold by December 1984. Eurogamer later reported that 350,000 units were sold in total. Crash confirmed rumors that the game was similar to Attic Attack, but declared Saberwolf the better and predicted that they would have similar legacies. The magazine wrote that their inability to intuit Saberman's current inventory or resistance to damage added to the game's mystique, 
and that Ultimate was particularly skilled at not giving hints but leaving sufficient clues through the game's design. Personal Computer Games found one such tip, that the indigenous enemies make a sound when aligned with an amulet piece. In a similar experience, Popular Computing Weekly slowly learned to use rather than avoid the orchids. Computer and video games described the game's instructions as cryptic. Crash later reflected that comparisons to Attic Attack at its launch were unfair, similar to calling any two text adventures identical. Critics had high praise for the colorful and detailed graphics and animations. In the opinion of computer and video game reviewers, Saberwolf carried Ultimate's momentum from Jetpack and Attic Attack and had the best graphics of any ZX Spectrum game. With graphical detail that surpassed what previous reviewers had considered the computer's limits. Sinclair user particularly liked how the hippo enemies forced the player to vary their hack and slash gameplay style. A crash reviewer called the game a software masterpiece. The magazine received more mail in praise of Saberwolf in 1984 than for any other game, and a year later, repeated that Saberwolf was among the top games available for the Spectrum, adding that the game did not feel antiquated. Computer and Video Games' Commodore 64 review, two years after the original release, approved of the port and said that the game remained a classic. Reviewers complained of the game's high price, which was nearly double the average. Crash wondered if the cost might lead to more piracy. Critics also noted a bug in two-player mode, repeat screens from elsewhere in the maze, and the frustratingly narrow window in which saber swings register as enemy hits. Computer and video games recommended drawing a map of the maze, without which it was easy to get lost. While Saberwolf had some flicker issues, said Sinclair user, the game altogether met Ultimate's high-quality benchmarks. A retrospective review from Retro Gamer reduced Saberwolf to an interactive maze packed with color and hack and slash gameplay. The magazine likened the game's color choice and setting to what the magazine considered Ultimate's best arcade game, Dingo, and lamented Saberman's inability to hit enemies above or below him. Eurogamer's Peter Parrish retrospectively found the game's collision detection imprecise as well. In the Routledge Companion to Video Game Studies, Simon Needenthal used Saberwolf as an example of games that maximized the limited color palette of 8-bit computers. He described the colors as glowing like stained glass, and the effect of color, purity, are enhanced by contrast with the black background. Section 4. Legacy Players and game journalists Consider the game among the Spectrum's best. Saberwolf was the first of four titles in the Saberman series for the ZX Spectrum. Retro Gamer credited the character's name and character traits for its lasting memorability. As an ordinary human with a hat and exaggerated nose, Saberman fit the video game 8-bit era's character archetype. The last unreleased game in the Spectrum Saberman series, Miramar, was planned to have been similar to Saberwolf in gameplay. Rare, the successor to Ultimate, later released a side-scrolling platformer in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance handheld console, also titled Saberwolf, in which Saberman enlists jungle animals to solve Saberwolf's puzzles. It was not received well by fans. Elements from the original Saberwolf appeared in other games, including Rare's Jet Force Gemini, Retro Gamer considered Saberman's reoccurring appearance to be proof of Rare's interest in the character and series. For all 23 references, notes, and external links where the game can be played for free, please check the article on Wikipedia at en.wikipedia.org. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License available at creativecommons.org.